Have you ever wandered through your city and found yourself mysteriously drawn to a certain spot? Or perhaps you've wondered if the layout and design of our concrete jungles actually have an impact on our emotions and behaviors? Well, you're in the right place, because today, we're diving into a fascinating concept that tackles these very questions. In this episode, we'll be exploring the mind-bending world of psychogeography, as introduced by none other than Guy Debord. We're going to uncover the hidden ways our cities and towns shape our emotions, thoughts, and actions, and reveal how you can experience your own urban environment in a whole new light. So, buckle up, and get ready for an eye-opening journey through the streets and alleys of our everyday lives. Trust me, after watching this episode, you'll never look at your city the same way again. Stay tuned, and let's embark on this urban adventure together. Now, let's take a step back in time and explore the roots of psychogeography. The man behind this captivating concept was none other than Guy Debord, a radical thinker and key figure of the Situationist International Movement. But what exactly was this movement all about, you ask? Well, my friends, the Situationist International was fueled by a strong anti-capitalist ideology. These rebels with the cause were on a quest to challenge the mundane, cookie-cutter experiences of urban life. They were fed up with the growing commercialization and commodification of everyday existence. So, they set out to find new ways to experience the city, to break free from the invisible chains of consumerism, and to, dare I say, create their own urban adventures. But how did they plan to achieve this, you might wonder? By embracing the unexpected, venturing off the beaten path, and discovering the hidden gems of our urban environments. They believe that by altering the way we perceive and interact with our cities, we could break free from the monotonous cycle of work and consumption, and find joy in the seemingly ordinary. So, what do you think? Are you ready to delve deeper into the world of psychogeography and uncover the secrets behind this revolutionary movement? Stay with me, fellow urban explorers, as we continue our journey through the winding streets of Debord's radical ideas. So, what is psychogeography? It all began with De Boer's groundbreaking essay, Introduction to a Critique of Urban Geography. This fascinating piece of writing laid the foundation for an entirely new way of looking at our cities. But what could possibly connect psychogeography to artistic movements like surrealism and Dadaism? Let's find out, shall we? Psychogeography shares some common ground with surrealism and Dadaism. Much like these avant-garde art movements, psychogeography seeks to challenge our perception of the world around us. In a sense, it's like taking a walk through a surrealist painting or stepping into a Dada's poem, where logic and reason give way to the bizarre and unexpected. Can you imagine strolling through your city as if it were an ever-changing dreamscape, with each street corner offering a new surprise? How would that affect your daily life? Would it make your morning commute just a little more bearable or transform your afternoon stroll into a thrilling adventure? And what if I told you that you could tap into this same creative spirit that inspired the surrealists and Dadaists simply by wandering through your city streets with a fresh perspective? The possibilities are endless, my friends, and it all starts with opening our minds to the wonders of psychogeography. Are you ready to take the plunge and explore your city like never before? Now, let's delve into the fascinating world of psychogeography by examining its key principles. First off, we need to consider the impact of urban environments on our emotions and behaviors. How many times have you walked past a dreary building and felt a sudden wave of melancholy? Or perhaps entered a bright, open plaza and felt a burst of energy? The psychological influence of architecture and city planning is more significant than you might think. For instance, crowded sidewalks, confusing street layouts, or imposing skyscrapers can all impact our mood and stress levels. But have you ever stopped to wonder why some places make us feel nostalgic while others inspire a sense of adventure? That brings us to our second key principle, the role of personal history and associations in shaping our perception of places. Think about it. Your favorite park bench might hold fond memories of a first date or a long, heartfelt conversation with an old friend. In contrast, 
another person might associate that same spot with a difficult breakup or a heated argument. Isn't it amazing how the very same place can evoke such different emotions in each of us? What if we started to approach our cities and towns as a canvas for our own personal stories and emotions? Could we find hidden gems in the most mundane of places? Or perhaps unearth long-forgotten memories in the cobblestone streets of our past? Now, let's talk about derive, a French word that means drifting. Picture this, you're wandering through the city, guided solely by your intuition and curiosity, with no specific destination in mind. Sounds liberating, right? Well, that's precisely the essence of derive, a spontaneous exploration of urban spaces. You see, our daily routines often confine us to familiar paths, as we rush from home to work, to the grocery store, and back again. But what if we just paused for a moment, broke free from these routines, and took a new turn? What if we dared to get a little lost in our own city? Could we uncover hidden treasures and insights that we never even knew existed? Derive encourages us to experience the city anew, with fresh eyes and an open heart. It's about allowing ourselves to be guided by the unexpected, the sights, sounds, and smells that capture our attention as we drift through the urban landscape. Who knows, you might just stumble upon a quaint little cafe tucked away in an alley or a mesmerizing street mural that brightens up a dull corner. So, are you ready to challenge the boundaries of your comfort zone and embrace the unpredictable? What surprising discoveries await you as you wander through your city, free from the shackles of routine? Remember, sometimes the most extraordinary experiences can be found in the most ordinary places. All it takes is a little curiosity and a willingness to drift. Now, let's dive into the concept of unitary urbanism. Imagine a city where every corner is designed to create engaging experiences, where the lines between work, leisure, and art blur into a harmonious whole. Sounds utopian, doesn't it? Well, this is the essence of unitary urbanism, transforming the urban landscape to create a more vibrant and dynamic environment for all. But why should we care about unitary urbanism? Well, think about it. How many times have you walked through a lifeless, monotonous neighborhood, feeling nothing but boredom and detachment. Wouldn't it be amazing if our cities were designed to provoke wonder, excitement, and a sense of belonging? The idea behind unitary urbanism is to challenge the division between work, leisure, and art. Instead of having designated areas for each, this concept encourages the integration of all aspects of life into a unified experience. Imagine a world where your daily commute to work is filled with artistic installations, playful spaces, and thought-provoking encounters, a place where the boundaries between the ordinary and extraordinary are blurred. Picture this, public parks that double as open-air art galleries, streets filled with spontaneous performances, and buildings designed to inspire creativity and innovation. Doesn't that sound like a city you'd want to live in? So, let me ask you, are you ready to reimagine your city as a playground of possibilities? Can you envision a world where the urban landscape becomes an intricate tapestry of work, leisure, and art, all interwoven into a breathtaking experience? With a little imagination and a touch of unitary urbanism, perhaps we can turn this dream into a reality. So, you might be wondering, how can we apply psychogeography to our everyday lives? Let me share an idea with you. Designing a personal psychogeographic walking tour. Sounds fun, right? Now, before you roll your eyes, let me explain. We often walk through our cities and towns on autopilot, following the same routes and routines day after day. But what if we shook things up a bit? What if we intentionally chose an unfamiliar route or location to explore? Imagine the possibilities. The key to designing a personal psychogeographic walking tour is to let go of your expectations and embrace the unexpected. Forget the GPS, ditch the map, and simply follow your intuition. Go left when you'd usually go right, or take that intriguing alleyway that's always caught your eye. What might you encounter on your adventure? Perhaps it's an extraordinary mural hidden behind a row of buildings, or maybe it's the soothing sound of a hidden fountain in a tucked-away courtyard. 
You might even stumble upon a quirky cafe or a mysterious antique shop that you never knew existed. The point is, by embracing the unknown, you'll be opening yourself up to a world of unexpected sights and sounds that have the power to reshape your perception of the city. So, the next time you're feeling a bit too familiar with your surroundings, why not give this psychogeographic walking tour a try? Who knows, you just might rediscover the magic and wonder that's been hiding in plain sight all along. Now, let's take a moment to think about our emotional responses to different urban spaces. Have you ever noticed how certain areas evoke distinct feelings? It could be that one street makes you feel calm and relaxed, while another might spark a sense of adventure or even unease. Why is that? As you wander through the city, take the time to observe how the architecture and design of different spaces affect your mood. Are there particular elements, like narrow streets, wide plazas, or specific color palettes, that consistently trigger specific emotions? What about the combination of textures, materials, or even the way light plays on surfaces? Asking yourself these questions allows you to become more attuned to your surroundings and to the ways in which urban design influences your psyche. But here's the interesting part. It also helps you to understand yourself better. What is it about a certain building, park, or street that resonates with you on an emotional level? Could it be a memory from the past? Or is it something more instinctive and primal? Remember, there are no right or wrong answers here. The beauty of psychogeography lies in the exploration and the discovery, both of your environment and your own emotional landscape. So, go ahead and dive into the depths of your city and your mind, and see what fascinating connections you might uncover. Who knows? You might even find yourself inspired to reshape your surroundings or your perspective on the world around you. Now, let's shift our focus for a moment and talk about a real-life situation that we all can relate to the impact of urban environments on mental well-being. Have you ever wondered why some cities feel more like a warm hug, while others feel like they're squeezing the life out of you? It's not just about the weather, my friends. The relationship between city layout and social isolation is an interesting one. Picture a city where streets are designed like a maze, with little nooks and crannies that separate people from one another. What kind of impact might that have on the residents? Feeling a bit like a rat in a maze, perhaps? On the flip side, imagine a city with open spaces and pedestrian-friendly streets, where people can easily connect and interact with one another. Doesn't that just sound like a breath of fresh air? And let's not forget about stress and anxiety in densely populated areas. You know what I'm talking about. The hustle and bustle, the honking horns, the crowded subways. It's enough to make anyone feel like they're trapped in a pressure cooker. But here's a thought. What if we could redesign these spaces to alleviate some of that stress? What if we could create urban oases where people could escape the caves and find a moment of peace and tranquility? So, the next time you find yourself feeling overwhelmed by your surroundings, take a step back and consider how the design of your city might be influencing your mental well-being. Is there something about the layout or the density that's contributing to your stress levels or feelings of isolation? More importantly, what can you do to change your environment? and create a space that promotes a healthier state of mind. The power to transform our urban landscapes is in our hands, my friends, and the possibilities are as boundless as our imaginations. So, let's dive into an interesting thought experiment. Picture yourself walking down the street, and suddenly you come across a giant pineapple. Yes, a pineapple. Right in the middle of the sidewalk. I know what you're thinking. Why on earth is there a pineapple here? But let's pause for a second and ask ourselves, how does this unexpected sight make us feel? Delighted? Confused? Inspired to make a fruit salad? Now, consider the architecture and design of the buildings surrounding you. Are they bland and monotonous, or do they have character and charm? Does the cityscape evoke a sense of awe and wonder, or is it just a concrete jungle with no soul? The way our cities look and feel can have a profound effect on our emotions, and we often don't even realize it. But here's a controversial opinion for you. What if we started incorporating more whimsy and playfulness into our urban environments? 
Imagine a city full of giant pineapples, colorful murals, and interactive sculptures that invite us to engage with our surroundings in a new and exciting way. Wouldn't that make our daily commutes just a little bit more enjoyable? Why not challenge the status quo and ask ourselves, how can we create urban spaces that not only meet our practical needs but also nourish our emotional well-being? Do we dare to dream of a city where the line between art and functionality is blurred, and our spirits are lifted by the simple act of walking down the street? So, my friends, the next time you find yourself strolling through your city, take a moment to consider the emotional landscape. What elements of your surroundings bring you joy, and which ones leave you feeling deflated? And most importantly, what kind of city do you want to live in, and how can you play a part in shaping its future? The answer might just be right under our noses, or perhaps, hidden behind a giant pineapple. Now I want you to picture your very own neighborhood, the place you call home. Take a moment to think about the areas that could use a little bit of psychogeographic magic. You know the spots I'm talking about, that vacant lot that's become an eyesore, or the row of identical buildings that seem to stretch on forever. So, what if we transform these spaces? Let's get creative here. Can you imagine turning that empty lot into a vibrant community garden, bursting with life and color? Or perhaps we could breathe new life into that monotonous block with a striking mural, turning the mundane into the extraordinary. Who wouldn't want to live in a neighborhood that surprises and delights at every turn? I mean, have you ever asked yourself, why are there so many beige buildings in the world? Is there a secret beige paint consortium? hell-bent on making our cities as dull as possible? Jokes aside, it's high time we challenged the norm and started demanding more from our urban environments. And speaking of challenging norms, why not consider how we might use underused or abandoned spaces in inventive ways? Picture a disused railway track transformed into a bustling urban park, or an old factory turned into a lively arts center. The possibilities are endless when we start to think outside the beige box. So, let's ask ourselves, what can I do to make a difference in my neighborhood? Perhaps it's as simple as planting flowers in a neglected space or painting a vibrant mural on a drab wall. Or maybe it's time to rally your neighbors and advocate for larger-scale changes that can make your community a more vibrant, engaging place to live. In the spirit of psychogeography and unitary urbanism, let's remember the words of Guy Debord. The spectacle is not a collection of images but a social relation among people, mediated by images. Let these words inspire us to go beyond the surface and create meaningful connections within our communities. By transforming our urban spaces, we can forge stronger relationships and make our cities more vibrant and engaging for everyone. Up until next time, take care and see you soon.